Welcome and Happy New Year! This is Seeking Sustainability in Japan. I'm JJ Walsh based in Hiroshima, Japan. Thanks so much for joining on this channel. You will find interviews with good people doing great things around Japan. The whole concept of the channel is to find great stories that connect us, share inspiration and innovation from Japan in terms of culture, traditions, reuse, bringing back the old days. Uh, ideas which are more relevant and more useful and necessary right now make a profit. So the people, planet, profit in balance is the basic lens through which we talk about culture, carpentry, authors writing interesting books, international longtime uh, experts based in Japan who have great insight, as well as Japanese entrepreneurs and innovators who are doing interesting things in a new way. In this episode, I'll be telling you what were the top 10 most viewed videos in 2021, what were the top 10 most listened to podcast episodes of 2021, which are both interviews with good people doing great things in Japan, trying to find higher quality ways to live our lives, uh, take care of the planet, and still make a profit. So just to give you a little overview of Seeking Sustainability in Japan, uh, it started in April 2020. I had 20 subscribers to my YouTube channel at that time. And uh, until December of 2021, uh, we hit 330 episodes. It's amazing. I can't believe that I was able to find so many amazing people who are willing to share their insights and uh, be so generous with their time to join my talk show. Um, when I first started, I never thought it would last for almost two years and have so many great people join. So big thank you to everyone who has joined the talk show series and been so generous with your time. Big thank you to everybody who's been watching, liking, subscribing, sharing, and donating to the channel as well as trying to support me and the work that I do. Um, in 2021, I did 161 interviews, which seems like a lot. Uh, people keep telling me I need to slow down, maybe go down to once a week. Is a worthwhile change for 2022, so we'll see. Okay, let's start with the top 10. Seeking Sustainability Live Interviews with Good People Doing Great Things in Japan, uh, the 2021 rankings. So coming in at number 10 is Dr. Chelsea Shindy Sheeter, who talks about her amazing book, Co-Ed Revolution, about Japan's female new left activists. Uh, what really struck me from this talk was how so many things in Japan are still the same in terms of the gender imbalance um, between groups. Even within the activists and student groups, there were a lot of roles that were designated for women or men. There was a really interesting dynamic which she uncovered in this interesting book. Really worth a read and worth a listen and a watch of this episode. Um, next, number nine. As B. Brown, the amazing expert of many different topics who has joined uh, the Seeking Sustainability Live uh, talk show many times. And this time, number nine, he's talking about sustainability and innovation of the Edo era in Japan, where he gives so many examples from his book, Just Enough, where during the Edo Jidai, in Japan about a hundred years ago, people were doing things for themselves to create better quality of life and better quality for the planet. They were reusing everything out of necessity because the borders were closed, but there was so much interesting insights that came out uh, from that time, which he highlights in the book and in the talk, 
which we should bring back now and think about how we can reuse those concepts and ideas and ways of living to live more sustainable lives, have more sustainable businesses now in our modern times. So next, number eight, uh, kimono. Sheila Cliff was talking about kimono fashion and taking it to the next level. Sheila Cliff is amazing. She teaches uh, kimono techniques and traditions to Japanese students herself in Tokyo. Uh, she works with kimono designers who are creating new ways of wearing kimono, not just in the traditional way, but mix and matching with Western clothes as well. So that was a really interesting talk. Tasker, Dr. Elizabeth Tasker talked about seeking out habitable planets in outer space and talking about her book, the planet factory so the in this talk it really struck me and it should strike anyone who researches this topic of course that we live on a very special planet we need to take really good care of it because there is no planet b there is no other planet which is habitable like earth is and number six lauren sharf who talking about her minka, her old traditional Japanese home remodel and running the Nippon Discovery uh, Instagram and sharing all these wonderful rural and off the beaten track travel insights from around Japan. She really focuses on high quality, uh, high end luxury, but uh, more sustainable types of travel services, destinations, and products. Uh, number five, Chelsea Shendi Sheeder. Again, this time she's talking about the relevance of accuracy for the comfort women history, how comfort women during the war are represented and talked about and trying to keep a good level of academic integrity and fact-based writing and research when we talk about these important and very sensitive issues. Uh, number four, Fared El Kahi, uh, uh, Morocco and Tokyo and Totori. He is now based in Totori and he is trying to do lots of permaculture ideas to create a higher quality of life for his young family who has settled in this rural area of Japan, uh, famous for its deserts and uh, beautiful countryside. But it's one of the most difficult prefectures to get to. So it's, it's often uh, somewhere that people don't even visit or go to live as an international family. He has a permaculture and organic farming and growing your own food and composting. Number three, again, Asby Brown, talking about the secrets of traditional Japanese carpentry. Another one of his amazing books, uh, The Genius of Japanese Carpentry, talking about the magic of temple carpentry and the, the focus that the head carpenter has to create not only a beautiful building, but to take elements from nature and respect those elements of the trees and the forests and represent that in the design of the temple. And I learned so much about temples uh, from this talk. It was really fascinating. Uh, number two, Thomas Klepfer, who is an organic no-till farmer in Mukaishima in Hiroshima near Onomichi. He was talking about uh, running a textile business with his partner and uh, balancing the needs of the animals on the farm with the no-till organic farming idea, uh, harvesting seeds, overwintering, uh, so many great tips about growing your own food and all of the effort that he's going through to not use pesticides or chemicals or herbicides or anything unnatural. And number one, eh, Asby Brown again. Uh, the number one talk was his talk on small house designs in Japan. He introduced so many beautiful design concepts, uh, even for the smallest of spaces, the use of beautiful, simple lines and windows that bring in natural light and the ideas that a lot of even very modern homes in Tokyo 
are using um, have roots back in Japanese history. So this was a fascinating talk, well-deserved place number one. So congratulations to everyone in the top 10, but also big shout out to all the guests. I think all the talks were amazing and have so many great insights in all of them. So thank you all so much. Hi everyone, let's talk about the top 10 Seeking Sustainability in Japan podcasts and the ranking for 2021. Now, very interesting that some of these most listened episodes. So thank you to all of you who enjoyed uh, listening to the podcast on your favorite podcast player and uh, tune in at least once a week. A new episode taken from the videos and lightly edited uh, for quality <laughs> will be uploaded. I would love to hear if you have any favorite topics you would like me to pursue, any favorite guests you would like me to ask back, so please uh, drop a comment or contact me via social media and let me know. Also, and uh, much appreciated. Thank you so much. Uh, number 10, we have Clementine Sandner who's originally from France and has settled in Japan for a long time as a designer and artist. She is very talented at reusing old beautiful kimono material and upcycling or repurposing it into gorgeous bags through her brand Mikan. And in this talk, she talks about uh, building her sustainable fashion brand. Uh, number nine, Brigitte Noro, also a uh, French Canadian. Uh, she's originally from Quebec and she was talking about Japan meditation, yoga, and doing the Shikoku pilgrimage. Number eight, Daniel Moore, who's a fantastic uh, guide, and he was talking about guiding week long rural adventures in Japan and also pickleball. He's a real advocate of the pickleball game. And number seven, Tyler Lynch was talking about sustainable tourism, innovation, and hospitality at a traditional inn in Nagano, where he took over a very traditional Japanese inn, Ryokan, and how he's running it, the kinds of services he's offering. He also joined with his chef uh, in the beginning of 2021 to teach us how to make a plant-based version of the traditional kaiseki meals, the traditional food served at special parties and at the ryokan inns. So Number six was a bonus episode where I talk about oyster plastic pollution problems. And uh, this is a problem very close to my heart because I'm a long time based in Hiroshima. But one of the biggest problems is the amount of plastic that is put in the ocean directly from the oyster industry almost every day. The, the plastic pollution we find on the rivers and in the oceans is from the oyster industry. So this episode is all about um, the problem and highlighting some of the issues and some of the potential solutions, how we can go back to using wood and bamboo like we did in the traditional oyster industry only 20, 25 years ago. So isn't that true for a lot of sustainability that there are solutions there? Um, there are better choices there. We just need to share the information and uh, be at a point where we're willing to change and willing to choose those better solutions. And number five, most uh, listened to episode was Asby Brown, uh, the number one video, most watched video, beautiful small house designs in Japan. He has so many great insights here about making beautiful spaces, even if you have only a small space to work with. And uh, number four is the amazing Robert Yellen of Yellen Yakimono Art Gallery in Kyoto. The beautiful aspects of Japanese pottery, the mysteries and the history. Um, this was an episode from 2021. He also uh, talked in 2020 and I had the chance to visit 
his studio in person. Uh, number three, again, the amazing Asby Brown talking about the genius of Japanese carpentry and the temple carpentry ideas and philosophy that he learned and wrote a book about. Uh, number two, Flo, Blaze, Thomas, and John about growing your own food, ideas for composting, ideas to do raised beds. And these three great people from different parts of Japan who are all growing their own food. Number one, yay! John Stolenmeyer, who is a carpenter based in Okayama, right next to Hiroshima. And he was talking about his love of traditional Japanese building methods and his background coming from America and learning different kinds of carpentry, but always being fascinated by Japanese carpentry methods and coming to Japan, doing his residency and internship and learning the techniques, and then now helping to remodel and restore traditional homes, as well as build temples and other traditional buildings. So thanks so much for listening and watching. That is our top 10, top 10 most listened to podcast episodes of 2021. Just to give you a bit of transparency, which is so important when we're seeking sustainability, um, I received about $200 uh, from donations and ad revenue, and I donated 5,000 yen, which is about $50 to Second Harvest Japan, which apparently bought 75 meals for people who are food insecure. So I felt like during our pandemic time, uh, supporting people and planet uh, through the organization Second Harvest, which is reusing a lot of the food waste, which is such a big problem in Japan. And they're working with restaurants and supermarkets and food places to reuse the good food, which maybe is ugly or didn't sell. And they're getting it to people who are food insecure. So I was really happy to use a big chunk of the support from the channel to support Second Harvest Japan. I hope to talk to someone from that organization this year. They're doing fantastic work. And big shout out to all my amazing supporters on Buy Me A Coffee, Patreon, YouTube, and Ko-fi. You guys are amazing and kept me going, kept me motivated to keep putting out great content. Really appreciate you guys. Mary, Jay, Sukonas, Emma, Ayaka, Marion, Chris, Tetsu, Wendy, Donna, Jan, Flo, Anna, Louise, Dave, Tina, Ali and Bobby, Robin, Anne, and Helene. You guys are amazing. I have sent all of you personal messages at the end of the year also to say thank you. If you're interested in becoming a supporter, have a look at my Buy Me A Coffee page, Patreon, YouTube, or Ko-fi.